Welcome to The Passion Pod with your host, Chris Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the feature presentation. Welcome to the show. Can you introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Nate Seip. I play mandolin and fiddle, one of the founding members of Pertnier Sandstone. How long ago was that that you founded this band? Ooh. Well, you know, we go back quite a ways. The founding members, uh, myself, Jay Lenz, Kevin Kniebel, were high school buddies. And uh, back in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, back in the late 90s. And uh, we went our separate ways and came back and found each other again in 2004, 2003, really. After a little while apart. So why'd you want to do bluegrass? When you grew up in the 90s, that wasn't like the music you listened to, was it? Oh, no. We were grunge. We were we had some country, some jazz, some if rock and roll. If you're going to go to a festival and you got to pick one person when you were in high school that you're like, this is the band that I'd freak out to go see who's going to be. Ooh. All right. So I was in a grunge band. We were like a Smashing Pumpkins cover band, basically. So Smashing Pumpkins is, yeah, is the yeah. winner. Yeah. Rad. What does your band sound like if you had to describe it to somebody who has never heard it? I would say, you know, it's modern string band music. It's like, it's acoustic music plugged in and able to play in large venues and, you know, a, a field of 5,000 people or a rock and roll club, but it's, it's hearkening back to a, kind of a simpler time of organic music where you can gather around and, uh, you know, have a, have a conversation with instruments and, and be able to, like, you know, play off each other's instrumentation and, and, and the kind of the vibe of the music is something that it coalesces depending on who you're playing with and the group that you have, the instruments that you have. It's a, it's a very organic type of music. So I've never been around a place that has a vibe like this. Like this definitely is a vibe. All the music is a very positive vibe. How do you curate this good of a vibe for this many people? Because you guys are part of the organization, all of this. Sure, yeah, you know, it's a, there's a large team involved in putting this together. And we all have our, you know, our, our sort of influences and musics that we like, but it really, it's, it's roots music. It's American roots music, which is a diverse form that branches into many different realms, but it, it really comes down to, you know, it's, it's the community. It's like the people's music. It's, you know, it's what brings people together. It's what facilitates a party. It facilitates just us having a, a good old time and being able to, to tap into the rest of the country and like the little communities of musicians that are around and that are traveling and that we've met when we're on tour out on the road. And it's, just, it's nothing but a pleasure to be able to curate this festival and bring these people in and, and tap into some of our favorite bands that we've been listening to for years and new friends that we're making on the road and bring it all together. And it's like, it's like a family reunion, some, some new family, some old family, but it's when you're, when you're here, you're part of the family. So you guys get to pick basically, I, w I was talking to Justin about it and it's kind of like me finding podcast guests where I just like put it out to people like who knows who does what I'll send a bunch of messages and we kind of eventually whittle it down to these are who, you know, the people are that we have, yeah. who are some of the bands that maybe you weren't the one that discovered them, but you're the one who is like, I want them at this festival. Sure. Oh man. The list goes on and on. Like, you know, we've been talking a lot about this week. Many people have mentioned the sort of people that have been on the stage here that we found kind of up and coming, like Billy Strings has been talked about, um, you know, Tyler Childers, like there, there's like a bunch of people who hit the stage here at Blue Ox and have sort of blossomed from there. And, uh, you know, all those people became my favorites after kind of discovering them after being booked for Blue Ox. But there's some of my favorites personally are like Del McCurry band. Every time you get a chance to see Del, go see Del. And he's here, and I'm thrilled to see him. People like Sam Bush, Bela Fleck. Like, the, the list goes on of people who are my heroes and influences and have influenced this whole genre and this whole community of people. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty remarkable that we're able to get them here and, and bring their energy to this community, the upper Midwest, which is such a vibrant community of festival goers and musicians and yeah it's hungry this area is hungry for for what blue ox has to offer we have a vibe like no one else i don't think anywhere else in the country you can possibly quite get this vibe how's it feel though when you can bring in the younger people like daniel donato last night yeah. who's like he's wait another, this guy's yeah. how young and he's already this good mm -hmm. who decided who is it that discovered him and was like this guy he's easy to discover at this point but i mean right. like who is like this guy needs to get on here because he when i talked to him briefly he was saying like dude, I'm not even bluegrass. And I'm like, 
your cosmic country, whatever that means. Right. Like, but it's it fits. rad. No, it does. Yeah, rad. yeah, it does fit. So, mm-hmm. why was it, who picked out uh, Daniel? Uh, I think that was our manager, Mark Gearing, who does the talent buying for the Blue Ox Music Festival. He, uh, you know, he's got a lot of lines out. He's he's trying to get the bands that we want, the bands yeah. that uh, the owners, the Bishels are looking for, and sometimes those bands work out, and other times the booking agency through the whole network of the music industry are like, hey, well, what about you know, check out this this other act that I have, and sometimes we discover great acts that fit perfectly, maybe even are outside or in the peripheral of what we're trying to do here, but ultimately like having an experience for people and having a variety of sounds that all kind of fit in the same genre is really you know that's that's kind of what we're looking for i feel like that's part of why it is so cool though you have the backstage where you can have some like really intimate kind of mellow stuff it's not always mellow by any means but then you party we had samantha (laughs) fish up here earlier (laughs) on stage and she was like rock like straight up rock and roll yeah Yeah. exactly shows up in her tight leather pants on stage just like crushing it it's a very good variety of different things you kind of have everything for everyone so you're do you guys tour all the time now we're, like are you full-time musician touring no we're kind of part-time i would say what yeah do you we do, do outside of the music then oh uh, well, there's we're all we all kind of have some day jobs like there's a music teacher and a carpenter and a, a bartender and you know delivery drivers and and consult you know corporate consultants and we kind of cover the gamut in terms of day jobs we're just all like regular people really you know sure. that do this as a passion and have been doing it so long now we can't not do it you know it's part of our dna it's just like part of who we are as individuals how we identify we're musicians but we're you know kind of more in the realm of folk musicians where you know like we 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 have done it for a, a, a great part of the year but life balance happens and you know like families are important and we're a family friendly event and like i think we as a band helping to curate the festival uh, you know, we bring that energy, we bring that life balance here as hosts of the Blue Ox Music Festival as well. Was there a time that you consciously decided, like, I don't necessarily want this to be full time where I'm traveling the world, like, I don't want to pursue that, I like where we're at, where, like, we have a big audience, we're doing our thing here, like, it's great, but I get to come home. Like, was that a conscious decision? Absolutely. When yeah. did you decide that? When did we decide that? Uh, you know, probably when we started having children, you know, like life gets real when kids come into the situation and you realize that, yes, you can keep doing the things you love, but you also have to prioritize, you know, providing and having a, a, a solid foundation for the home life. And those things are very important and not a lot of musicians can strike that balance. So the fact that we've been able to do that and still maintain this project and still be involved in Blue Ox and still grow this festival and grow our music, you know, and, and, and continue doing this. It's a success story, I feel like. You know, we're not, we're not striving at this point to be, you know, top 100 hit musicians. We're just helping the community and the, the culture that we've helped steward here in the upper Midwest. We're helping that to grow and, and be vibrant. And, yeah, we're... We're pleased, we're, we're proud of what it is right now. Yeah, I talked to Ian Allison, I don't know if you're familiar with him, he's a bass player based out of the Twin Cities and he's played with a lot of people, but he, he was talking about how when the, it clicked with him, he was like, you know, do I, what do I want to do? He was going through some stuff with his, his uh, wife and his therapist or whatever, or the, the couples counselor said, write down what your goals are, like what do you want to accomplish? And he just wrote down, support my family by playing the bass. Yes. And that was the click of like, wait a second. Yep. So it doesn't mean I need to open for this person or I need to travel to here or I need to make X amount of dollars or sure. billboard where I just want to like do this. Mm-hmm. So now he teaches and he does all kinds of things. Right. And I own a skateboard yep. shop. I knew that I don't want to be a pro skateboarder. I'm not good. Not yeah. like that kind of good. And I would never travel anyways. But if I look at it, it's like, dude, I would rather be able to come home to my family, curate the skate scene in my yep. town. And like I'm on the parks commission with the city. So I get to be involved in that yes. way. So it's like being able to have that kind of impact on your community is so meaningful in a way that just creating music can't quite get, you know? And I think when you discover that you can have all these different lanes, it just brings a whole nother level to what you do and a whole nother appreciation for especially what other people do. Right. I mean, just being in like, and I'm not going to go on a politics rant, but when I go to like city meetings and stuff and I see all these people that are committing all this time, totally volunteer. Yep. Just because they want to see the community like, better yeah you want to influence things you want right. things to get better you want things to continue on and in, in with the vision of of how you see its best run or best operating or or the the future of how you think things should be going you know all you can do is is like is be a positive person and put the energy out there and, and do it the best you can 
Well, you guys do a great job at it. You must be very proud of what you've built up here over the years. This is the eighth year, I believe, right? And it's yep. like something everyone in the area already knows about. People are flying in from all over, and this I yes. expect to get a whole lot bigger. What's a song of yours? We already picked two, so hopefully you don't pick one of the ones okay. that uh, Justin or Matt picked. But what's a song from Pertinier that we can play right now? Ooh, uh, you know, kind of topical today and uh, and throughout the last several years. A tune I wrote called No News is Good News. I think uh, that speaks volumes about just sort of the situation we're in. It's a very happy song with kind of a mixed message, and uh, and I think everyone can take it their own way and, and, and find a, ra- a way to relate. Well, hopefully they listen to it and then hop over to Spotify and then listen to you guys nonstop. All right. Just gives me the blues Never better than the day before I don't care for CNN It always kills the mood I'm in Afraid to even open up the door If you hear it on the radio The world's becoming rubble I'll spend the dollar and try to stay out of trouble No news is good news I've heard it said Just tell me good luck instead Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.